Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Sacktown Movie Buffs. Once again, I'm Pierre, and Jason will be here in just a second. He's coming in now. There he is. And uh, today we are back doing another uh, review of another Flick Fair film that's streaming on the website. Today's film is called Rome, which is directed by uh, director uh, David Jung. Um, so it's an action uh, sci-fi short film that's about 18 minutes long. Um, it kind of deals with uh, a lot of uh, uh, technological thing. Rome is basically about an organization that is uh, uh, basically kind of like an invasion of the body snatchers, if you will. Um, so they're basically taking over other people's bodies and people are wanting to kind of like get their bodies back. And um, so that's kind of the, the general principle of the film without going too much into details because obviously I want people to go to the flickfair.com and watch the film itself. Um, but uh, it's a very interesting uh, film. I, I thought that technically it's, 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 it, it was amazing technically. Um, there's a lot of really good sci-fi elements to it with like the things they do with the eyes and that sort of stuff. And so I really enjoyed that. Let me actually bring the poster in here actually. I totally forgot about that. Um, so I really enjoyed all the the the, the sci the, the sci-fi of it, and you could tell he definitely uh, you know used a lot of uh, uh, graphics and a lot of different types of elements in order to make those uh, to make those imagery uh, come alive and pop. So I really really liked that. Um, what was your thought on it? Yeah, I thought it had an interesting story. Yeah, um, I really liked the way that it looked. Yeah. you know, I kind of like that uh, that. Uh, you know, city at night with the rain yeah. kind of uh, aesthetic, you know, uh, in science fiction. So, you know, I, I really like the over, over, overhead city shots and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it, 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 it looked really cool, really cool idea. It seems like something that could easily be uh, developed into a feature. Yeah, yeah. It, it was only, uh, like I said, it was only about 18 minutes long, but it's definitely the kind of film where you kind of were wanting some more, and we'll kind of get into that with the director, kind of what, you, you know, what his, his overall process was, because I know how it works. Sometimes you do a little, a shorter film, and then, you know, you get a bigger budget, and then maybe you can add to that film, or you can do another piece that's even larger. But uh, but for 18 minutes, I, I thought that the visuals were, 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 were fantastic, so I definitely would be interested to see what he does in the future with that as well well so um i say without further ado we just kind of get right into it we'll go ahead and bring in david and uh kind of pick his brain for a little bit to see kind of you know what his thought process was going into the film and that sort of stuff so um so we're going to go ahead and bring him in it'll take him a second or two to come in here and there he is <laughs> hey david how hello. you doing today, man? hello hello how's it going today uh oh you just froze up on us oh, there you go I'm really good. I'm really good. You know, there was. Oh, uh, he just froze up. David's traveling. So... Oh, there you go. All right. You kind of froze up for a second there. So it's just. You got uh... me? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're sorry. coming in. You're coming in. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we happen to hit one of the worst one of the worst possible spots on this road uh, for connectivity, of course, happens to be right this mm. moment. Oh no! I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I understand. I understand. It's always challenging when, whenever you're traveling. Uh, so yeah, sorry to bother you on the day where you're traveling, but we definitely wanted to get you in here, just kind of pick your brain a little bit about the film. Um, so you probably heard us talking a little bit about it. Um, kind of, what was your overall thought process for for the film Rome? Kind of, what were you looking to do with this? Well, you know, it's I had I had an idea for this world, and. I, we knew it was a really big, intense, uh, potentially expensive, you know, as science fiction can really be expensive uh, project. But we, we love this idea of this, you know, futuristic dystopian society where the wealthy have the ability to steal uh, youth, basically, and steal the bodies of the poorest and most destitute of people. Um, and we actually we wrote a feature uh, um, Sorry, you're breaking up just a little bit there. Yeah, it looks like you might have froze just a just a but tad on that. In order to kind of really minute, like, did you guys lose me? Yeah, just for a second, man. We heard you say you were looking. You're back again. I can hear you now. Uh, you said you were making a feature, and then all of a sudden, uh, uh, you kind of cut out there. I do apologize. 
Well, we wanted to, you know, we, we, we wanted to do the short so that we could give kind of the world a taste of what we would be after, you know, in, in, in doing a feature. Got it. That totally makes sense. Yeah, no, no, I think that... Really big world and it's, you know, we have... Yes. I by epic in mind that we want to do. Uh huh. Yeah, sorry, you kind of broke up a little bit there. I only got bits and pieces. I do apologize. Got me back again. I I, I, I am I so so sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, kind of coming and going just a little bit. We we get a couple of sentences out of you, and then you kind of you kind of drift off a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So so you so from uh, from what I heard, it sounds like you were looking to do a, a feature length film, but you kind of started off with with a shorter film at first. Is, is that correct? Yep, one hundred percent. Okay, and so, uh, so, so I guess my, my my question for you was: Is this something that you want to expand on this film, or are you looking to go on a different avenue with, with, I guess, with a bigger budget or something of that nature? I'm guessing. Well, you know, it's interesting because you know we have a couple of different outlets that are interested right now in doing something with the property, either as a TV series, as a feature as a comic book we have interest from a virtual reality company that just loves the concept of what would it be like to walk in someone else's shoes mm -hmm. for 15 minutes or look out of somebody else's eyes for a few minutes and doing something like that so in all of these different avenues of course there's a different approach to what that story we feel like with what we can do um that it, it just depends on kind of what avenue we, we explore first. Um, and, and we've gotten such a great response to the short. Uh, we've, we've been playing, you know, we just finished the short in October. Okay. And submitting it to festivals and we're doing really, really, really well in the festival circuit. Um, and a lot of people love the character that we've set up in the short. Or so... Yeah. Oh man, you kind of froze again. Sorry. <laughs> we going again? Hello? 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. We got you again. Sorry. Yeah, you just froze for a second. I've got a. <laughs> well, 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 at least this will be the, this will be the worst interview you guys have ever answer. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 might. We have all, all 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 types, you know, and we understand you're traveling, so it makes a, makes a little a little, you know, with the reception and that kind of stuff. So we get it. Um, but yeah, we, we hear some of what you're saying, but you, you just kind of cut out a little bit. So I do apologize. Um, but um, but yeah, so yeah, so I, I did hear that you're you're doing really well in the festivals, which is which is really good. Um, and it sounds like you're getting a lot of a really good reception to creating this this character in this world. So um, so so yeah, that, that's great. So was this your first film then, or you still there? First short film of Michael King. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, first, the possession of Michael King. You said. Yeah. Okay. So it was a horror film. The, the, the possession of Michael King was my first film. was a was a horror film. Uh, did a handful of mm -hmm. uh, years back. That film did really well. But mm -hmm. it was it was a found footage film. Um, and it's it's hard to transition from found footage into live action films, for one reason or another. I'm not really sure why. Um, <laughs> but, but we uh, this this was my first short film. Yeah. Do you guys still am I am I still uh, coming through? Yeah, I, I hear I hear that was your first short film. So how long was yeah. was the found footage film? How long was that one, the possession film? Uh, that was that was a full length feature. Okay, okay. It's a full length. Um, and then you said you made that a few years a few years back though. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then obviously with with COVID and things going on right now, I'm sure it probably makes it a little more difficult to to do a, a feature length film right now at this time in this juncture. Anyways, I'm sure. So. Um, 
I mean, we're hoping that, you know, that COVID is going to be, you know, this, this year is hopefully going to be better than last year. Um, yeah, I mean, we're all year. hoping that. I mean, I mean, yeah, last year was not good for filmmaking, that's for sure. <laughs> so almost, almost everybody that we've talked to has been doing films, you know, we had to do this because of COVID or we had to do this because of COVID or, you know, so now I definitely understand that everybody's kind of looking for a better, a better, a better opportunity going into this year, um, for sure. Um, was there some questions you have for him as well, Jason? Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Um, I was, I was wondering what, what were some of your, uh, what are, oh, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. okay cool. Uh, <laughs> I was I just can, asking, what are some you. of your favorite, what are, what are some of your influences? Uh, some of your influences and some of your favorite filmmakers. Well, you know, it's funny. So we had, we just had the premiere for Rome uh, on uh, Thursday night. And we've had an incredible response from that. And it was nice to be getting feedback and reviews where uh, a lot of people were saying, you know, uh, you know, early James Cameron, you know, Terminator, Mm -hmm. uh, the Wachowskis and the Matrix, um, you know, Ridley Scott and Blade Runner. Yeah, and of course. hearing hearing those things come back to me, of course, was just phenomenal because those are all the filmmakers that I've loved my entire life and, and still love. And, you know, to, you know, to feel like I could try to capture, you know, my my own, uh, uh, you know, my own look and, and feel for something like this. And, you know, of course, we, we had zero money. You know, we made the short for $30,000. So, um, but to be compared to those kind of filmmakers and those kind of worlds was, was just, is, has been fantastic, you know, because uh, those, those are all, those are, those are all my heroes as, as, as filmmakers. And, mm -hmm. you know, would, I, I would love to, uh, you know, to blow this movie up and be able to do it like, you know, like the Matrix or something like that. So, uh, those are for sure all of all of my influences. Absolutely, yeah, no, no, it definitely comes across in the in the film as well. We could see some of those some of those uh, influences where you know everyone has people that they kind of gravitate towards. And for a sci-fi film, I mean, naturally you're gonna start remembering some of those other films, like you said, with like the Terminator and the Blade Runners and that kind of stuff, or anything that has to do with like invasion of body snatchers or anything of that nature. Some of those things are gonna come back and 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 remind us of some of those other films as well. Um, but yeah, no, no, great, great. Um, so you, um, uh, so did you, were you, not to get two person, but you, you financed everything yourself? Did you do all of the, the editing and, and that sort of stuff or? So we did a, uh, we did a Kickstarter campaign. Um, okay. and this was the, this was the first time I had ever done a Kickstarter campaign. And, um, you know, it, it was, it was hard doing a kick. The Kickstarter campaign was as involved as making the film. Mm -hmm. um, because you, the, the things that you have to create to mm -hmm. do that campaign. Um, and you know, we were shooting little snippets of videos and we had to shoot like a little mock commercial and we had to shoot like a little pretend snippet of Rome and somebody on the run. And it was like, we were in constant production to continue putting material on the Kickstarter page, to continue reaching back out to people, to continue offering people different things like a you know a small background role in the movie and uh oh you just cut out just for a second there man really <laughs> asking for money which is always always really difficult um but uh you know it was it was exciting and it and it was an avenue that kind of really kick-started the ability for us to be able to make this short film you know right uh so when, 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 when you're trying to do something like this and you don't have, you know, deep pockets and you don't have the financing, um, you know, Kickstarter has, has opened up an avenue for filmmakers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to do something like this and, and hopefully have an opportunity um, to, to make a short that allows people. You kind of cut out right. right it, it was, it was fun. Would I want to jump right back into another Kickstarter campaign and do that all over again? 
probably probably not would my would my friends and family and relatives all want me calling them incessantly you know every week for donations <laughs> probably not. yeah um, for, for friends and family that's the first people you hit up right <laughs> oh my god well and that's and that just has to be part of your campaign you know that right. that's what it's all about you have to reach out to every single person that you know and if every single person that you know donates you know 20 bucks then you know you can make a movie or you can make a little piece of something Absolutely. Um, you know, but it was it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I definitely look back on it and, you know, everything about it was challenging uh -huh. and everything about it was, you know, like we weren't doing a, you know, a low budget movie that takes place with four actors in a room. We were doing something that we were trying to build a science fiction experience mm -hmm. with real props and cool locations and motion graphics and you know up to the point of shooting you know you know every day not having working props and being you know you know locations being locked out of places and um you know it was it, it was it was really a challenge you know ha having uh you know we, we were lucky that we had really great people involved and we were able to rope in some really talented people that helped us um mm -hmm. You know, but all, all across the board, like, you know, our, our stunt coordinator, uh, Henry Kinji, you know, who's amazing and and does like the Fast and the Furious movies and really, really big movies. He's like, you know, the fight sequence that you guys want to do, we would normally have a week to just plan out this fight sequence. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're like, well, we have it. We have a half a day to, to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, you know, So you're constantly, you know, up against the gun like that and you're right. constantly just trying to reconfigure and refigure out how are we going to how are we going to make this work when you know the mask that we built is supposed to have these lights that come on and supposed to have all of these things that move and none of that works and none of that's happening but we have everybody here right now and we have to shoot something right um so we're going to go for broke right <laughs> go, for, go, go for broke man but that's you know, I mean, it's like when, when you're in it, it's, it's awful because you're pulling your hair out and mm -hmm. you're like, God, why, like, why did we ever do this? And your producing partner is chain smoking cigarettes and they don't even smoke, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and every, you're like, my God, this was a, a total disaster. And how are we ever going to make a film out of this? But, you know, then you get done with all of it. And you're like, Oh man, it was so much fun. I wish we were back on set again. <laughs> right. Right. No, absolutely. What was, um, I, I think you said you finished in October. How, how long did it take you to, to, to shoot and complete the whole process? How long was it? So it, it took us five days to shoot it. And then we actually had to add a day onto that because we had one location. So the, the finale of the film that takes place in that beautiful penthouse, mm -hmm. that's like all glass, like overlooking downtown Los Angeles. Uh -huh. We went, we went through a, a production location company to secure that location. But when we got there um, and we had about half of the gear loaded into the penthouse, we had the camera, we had a couple crew members and somebody came in the front door and they said, yeah, so I'm here for the film shoot. And the front desk security person said, well, there's no shooting allowed in this building. Mm. Um, and we, he said, what are, you, what are you talking about? There's no shooting. This is a residential building. There's no shooting here. So the, the, the place that rented the location out to us was kind of a scam. But we had, they weren't going to allow any of the rest of the gear to get up there. They locked everybody else out. And they called the police. And they said, you have to vacate the premises. But it was one of those low budget scenarios that I was up in the penthouse. I had a camera. We had day old sandwiches from the day before we had, you know, we have, what we had, and my producer was locked outside and he said, look, the cops are coming. We got to leave. And I said, well, if we leave, we're not going to, we're like, we're, we're not going to be able to get back in. Do this right. again. We're not going to be able to get back in. We're going to lose the cast. We're going to lose right. the crew. So we barricaded the door with a camera cart and we shot, what we could with what we had um in that scene but because we couldn't also shoot we were supposed to do this bathroom scene there we were supposed to do this scene where she's standing in front of the mirror when she puts the contact lens in her eye we had all this other stuff so we had to add an extra day of shooting and we had no place that we could shoot it and we didn't have the money to shoot any place so we had to shoot that in my house <laughs> so i you know 
you, you never want a, a crew to come come in, especially once you've been around a film crew. You never want to invite that circus into your own home. But, yeah, <laughs> right, I understand my, that. Uh, yeah. my, my my kids, my kids, and and my wife were, you know, gracious enough to uh, allow us to shoot for a day in my house. So we, you know, put up some green screens, and you know, we also had to shoot a sequence in my garage. The the whole opening scene of the movie which is which is the old lady sitting at the computer mm -hmm. with the with the with oxygen the, mask yeah, and yeah. she's choosing the by that was all in my garage at home we just green screened that whole thing and the old the old lady act was is my 96 year old next door neighbor <laughs> <laughs> he was great he was great she i want to say like she's got such a like a, a striking face you know like she oh, was really great she's <laughs> fan fantastic um, I'm not sure she knew exactly what she was doing with the, the, the <laughs> what she signed up for. <laughs> she's like, she's like she I don't know, they got me in here wearing, wearing this oxygen mask, and uh, <laughs> she's the she's the sweetest person on the planet. Oh no, um, she's great. yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I yeah, but I, but I, so it, you know, it was it was a lot of fun, and I, I forgot what the, there was a second half of your question, and I forgot what it took. Huh? How long did it take? Oh, oh, and then post. <laughs> so. That was the uh, shooting was like five or six days, but then post we were in post for two years because mm -hmm. we didn't we didn't have the money for post production, so we were reaching out to students that were in schools across so the world, and we had VFX students in classes, and we would reach out to the teachers mm -hmm. and say, look, we've we've got this the science fiction movie that we're doing. And is there any chance that you would want to incorporate some of the visual effects into your class right. and have it be a, a learning experience for your students? And so we had a couple of professors that would do that. We had students that were doing that. And, you know, the pros and the cons of that are that one, you're you're getting work for free or you're getting work where you're saying, look, once if we sell this and the movie makes money and we have an outlet for it, everybody has a contract and we're going to sure. pay everybody for all the work that they've done. Um, the, the con to that though, is that you're getting students that don't really know what they're doing. Yeah, they're so in, you, take, yeah, yeah. you take, you end up taking on this role of a teacher as well. So I taught uh, visual effects for the last two years uh, to students around the world because they would send something in and you would literally have to spend hours of writing notes and talking about what it should look like and talking about the problems mm -hmm. and working through all of that with yeah. them was really was really a trying and time consuming experience. No, um, I can understand that for sure. Yeah, no, so it, it was it was it was two it was it, you, you know, it was two two and a half years in the making and you know, it was all that post production work of just waiting for yeah. those shots to come in and where you'd have one artist doing one eye shot and it would be fantastic. And then you'd have another artist that would try to do an eye shot and it would be a disaster. And you'd then try to get the other artist to do it. that did the, the other one and that person would be gone and you wouldn't be able to contact them. Right. And so it was this constant, constant struggle and constant battle. Um, and if, yeah, if you talk to, uh, you know, Brady Hallengren at, at Rocket Panda Post, who is our post-production supervisor, you know, who was just trying to weed through all of these different shots coming in in different formats, in different timing, in mm -hmm. different frame rates, in different you know color schemes. Like it was, it was, it was a lot of work. Yeah, yeah no, no, that stuff is really, really challenging. Yeah, I, I, I've heard, I've heard stories about people whose films, you know, were on shelves. You hear stories about films that get sit, sit on shelves for years for for various reasons, but sometimes it's just because they don't have. Uh, the funds or they ran out of money to do the post work and that kind of stuff. So it just gets shelved and so they can figure out creative ideas like either, like you said, using students or recent grads that just want to get their names out there. And some people just want to get their name on a project, not so much looking for monetary work. They're like, cool, if I get my name on this project, you know, maybe that's going to propel me or whatever case. Now I've got at least some credentials to put down on a resume or a project piece to go work in Hollywood or whatever case may be. So, yeah. 100%. And the, the other piece of that too is that you know, once once you're invested in this process, you know, we, we know that our names are going to be on this film. We know that it has to look good. And even though we didn't have, you know, the initial funds to spend, you know, we could have spent 
a few million dollars on this 18 minute short, you know, just with what we were trying to accomplish with it. Yeah, it's, it's a know, really technical piece. So I could, I could see how the cost could, could, could add up really, really quickly. Yeah, so, and has so, that much so science fiction in it. Working with, working with all these people, we, you know, we wanted to be as much of perfectionist as we could, you know, so that it really looked, you know, you spend two years on it. We didn't want it to look like it wasn't, you know, worthy of, of our time. Um, mm. you know, so, you know, we, uh, we also, we had that factor to, to consider, you know, mm-hmm. absolutely. Anything else you want to add, Jason? Oh uh, yeah. We talk, talked about it a little bit already, but I can't believe you shot that action scene in half a day. Like I was going to, that was one of my questions was like, how long did I bet that took a while to do, to do that? Cause it's fairly complex, but yeah, that was, that's incredible. <laughs> so it was, so, so on top of that, so we found uh, my uh, my line producer, and who's also the location scout, and also you know fifty other jobs on this. He found this location uh, underneath downtown Los Angeles, and it's where they actually shot uh, part of World War Z. Do you guys ever see World War Z? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's this this whole sequence when he's running through these tunnels and ends mm-hmm. up like in this uh, this laboratory with all the zombies and everything in it. So those are the same tunnels that he was in and he was able to work some crazy deal that we could virtually get that uh, location for free. So we have these insane tunnels that just look awesome and you don't even have to dress them at all. Cause like nobody's been down there for 70 years and the dust on everything is so thick that when the camera's like up, you can see like just the dust and stuff floating in the air and all the colors coming off the lights and just, you know, it was just amazing. Um, the problem is that there's miles and miles and miles of tunnels and mm-hmm. there's zero communication because your cell phones don't work. Walkie talkies don't work because it's your thick, thick earth underground. So base camp was literally a mile away from where we would be shooting. And, you know, we had B camera trying to shoot the soldiers running and stuff like that, while A camera was trying to either shoot the fight sequence or prep the fight sequence Mm -hmm. or prepping, you know, our our lead actor kind of, you know, sliding out uh, uh, of the tube and running down the tunnels and getting chased. And nobody could communicate with anybody else. So if we needed somebody on set with us, we'd have to run like a mile through these tunnels and you get lost <laughs> if somebody had used the restroom if somebody wanted a bottle of water if somebody so it was a nightmare trying to orchestrate all of that and then on top of that trying to get the things that we would need to be able to set up to do things like that fight sequence it was you know it was it was just really difficult but you know the the fact that you know i, I we would we would have pulled it off if we didn't have someone is as professional as as uh, henry kinji um who was just yeah. able to come in and walk through i'm like this is and, and i knew exactly what i wanted to do which i think really helped him a lot too that i could actually walk through and say this is exactly how i want to beat this out and these are like all the moments mm-hmm. and he was able to kind of work with me on that and we just you know and, and, and pull it off um and we also had a really talented uh william spencer um, who was the uh, double um, for our for our lead in that fight sequence? William Spencer is a famous skateboarder um, who does all these really insane skateboard tricks, and um, he looks a lot looked looked a lot like our lead. So he was the stunt double for him. Um, so when the, like the flip that he did, like backflip that he did, like off the fence, uh-huh. when he does that kind of stuff. He you know we were they were about to rig up all of this stuff. And he's like, you know what? Let me, let me just see if I can do that. <laughs> and, I, and I, and I you know, I looked at the producers and I'm like, do we have insurance? For this? Right. 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 This kid or gets hurt. Just, did he sign anything or, um, <laughs> so there was, there, there's actually, there's a behind the scenes video that we, that we put together for the premiere. I don't think you guys saw that mm. obviously. No, no, no. Um, no I, I'd love to be able to share that with you. It's, it's, it's really, really cool. But there's a shot in that behind. We go behind the scenes about that fight sequence and about a lot of that stuff. And there's a shot where the first time he tried to do it, he puts his, he runs and his legs go up 
on the fence and he puts his hand on the guy's back and he falls like upside down in the in the air. The other guy like catches him as he comes down. There's a collective gasp that goes across the entire set. Um, you know, and he stands back up and we're like, oh crap, we're not gonna be able to do this. And he, he's like, let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Run one more time. You know, so he just he did it and he nailed it. Um, you That's know, cool. and and it yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't break his neck. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, me too. That would have been yeah. a huge, huge liability issue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but, the, but the, the fact that we were able to get, and that was because of my producing partner, uh, Kane Angel, is a really big skateboarder, and he reached out to him and knew that William wanted to get into doing some stunt work. Mm. And you know, if we didn't, if we didn't have someone like that, that really had that natural ability. And if you look at some of William Spencer's skateboarding videos the stuff that he does, like he'll jump off a skateboard and run across like, you know, bicycles or cars. And then the skateboard is still on the road and he lands back on top of it, or he'll do a backflip off of something and land on a moving ski. Like he had those skills. So yeah, you know, he's been we doing that. Yeah. Him yeah. Be part of the project. If that didn't work out for us, we never would have been able to pull that off, you know? So we, yeah. we, we had some miracles just in, you know, the people that we had around us that, that were Absolutely. really, you know, allowed some things to become possibilities. Cool stuff, man. Well, yeah, definitely. Uh, like I said, it definitely came through that to have uh, somebody that, that, you know, obviously wants to do stunt work and has been doing those types of flips and movements and that kind of stuff in the past, for sure. And I completely understand. So, so what's kind of, so what's, what's next for you? Well, you know, hopefully uh, we'll be turning Rome into a series or a series of features. Um, that's that's kind of in the works right now, mm -hmm. um, and we'll see what happens. Outside of that, I've got an animated project uh, that we're animating right now called Karnacki the Ghost Finder, which is based on a series of books around turn of the century that mm -hmm. take place in London. He's like the first supernatural uh, ghost hunter. So imagine like Sherlock Holmes meets Ghostbusters in 1905. Okay. Um, and he's, okay. you know, he, he's kind of like a Batman, uh, of, of, of paranormal investigators. Cause he's a scientist and he comes out all this stuff that there's gotta be some scientific principle behind how this poltergeist is operating and what's happening. And so he builds all this really cool stuff in his lab to be able to battle them. So very excited about that project. Um, Sounds fun. Yeah, is that gonna is that gonna be like a feature length film or how is that gonna be a series or so, what? Are you... So so right now we're we're doing that one again as another short, an okay. animated short, uh, with the intention of turning it into a turning it into a feature. Cool, well, cool stuff, man. Well, we definitely uh, look forward to your to your next project and uh, definitely feel like uh, you know with the like I said the the technical elements were, were just phenomenal in there so we definitely look forward to whatever you're going to do next uh, definitely you know whatever you do definitely send it our way and we'll we'll definitely check it out and maybe have you back on on the show again uh was there anything that you awesome. that you would like to add or David no just that the uh, the second half of this interview went so much better than the first half yeah yeah, yeah no yeah. Yeah. absolutely <laughs> yeah, i pulled yeah. over at a spot that i felt like we were all communicating yeah yeah no, 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 that was good man we, we <laughs> think up quite a bit uh so no 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 it, 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 buddy and this is one of those things those technical things that happen so uh we 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 we've, we we've had we've had worse actually so we've had um, <laughs> so no definitely uh wow definitely glad you were able to pull over and sorry that you know we we took up some time from your your, your drive where, where are you headed to again i can't remember where you said you're headed up to headed to uh we, we were in lake tahoe and we're headed back to los angeles got it okay yeah okay perfect well sounds, so good, <laughs> well, sounds yeah. good well yeah, anything thank you, you want to add uh for for uh, anybody watching or anything that you wanted to share or... no i just wanted to say thank th thank you guys so much uh for for the interview today really appreciate being on the show this is awesome Absolutely. we're gonna we're gonna have to try to catch a bunch of the other episodes on the rest of our drive now um, yeah, yeah. You know, go, sure, yeah. If, you if you haven't seen, uh, if you haven't seen Rome, you know, go check it out. If you haven't seen The Possession of Michael King, it's a really cool movie. I think uh, go check that out too. And sure. uh, you know, hopefully, we'll have another one we can share with you guys uh, sometime soon. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, to so anybody that's, that's watching, we definitely urge you to check out those two films. Once again, we found Rome on, on Flickfair. It's on various sources, of course, but we definitely urge you want to go to Flickfair and check them out. And then obviously, if you're a, a filmmaker or a director or anything like that, we definitely urge you to, to uh, sign up and get your film uploaded there so um, so you can get a, a feature for us as well. And that's where we're going to, to review a lot of these these short films and, and with new directors and that sort of stuff. So, um, so yeah, definitely look forward to your next project. Um, um, uh, as always, if you, if you have another project, send it our way, and um, and we'll, we'll definitely look forward to having you back on the show again. We thank you so much for joining us. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right, man. All right. Hey, take care. And, all right. Well, and drive safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Cool. Cool. Well, that was uh, that was Rome, uh, director with uh, David Jung. Uh, great guy. Sorry for the technical issues in the beginning. Uh, clearly, he was uh, he was he was uh, in commute. Uh, definitely cleaned it up. The second half was definitely better than the first half for sure. I uh, got into some great discussions. But um, but yeah. But as always, uh, we thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll be back again soon with another uh, Flickfair uh, promotion. Uh, definitely urge anybody watching again to check out Flickfair.com. They've got a lot of great films on there that are streaming and. Uh, Obviously, we're highlighting some of the some of the some of the premier ones, but there's tons of films on their site that you should check out as well. Um, but uh, we'll be back again soon with another show for you. As always, if you uh, uh, like uh, our channel, Sack Time Movie Buffs, we ask that you like, subscribe, make sure you hit the bell notification. Also, check out our podcast, and uh, we'll be back again soon with another show for you guys. We thank you so much for watching, and we hope you guys all have a great day. Bye.